Welcome to my game of Football Manager 2017, my Wigan game. This time I'm playing Rochdale, away from home, who was 16th and I'm currently 3rd after a spectacularly surprising result last time out. OK, Rochdale playing blue in 4-4-2. Should be different. Yes, last time out I changed to this 3-7-0 formation as built by a guy called The Reckonist, according to the workshop, who built this from some kind of live stream he did of FM 2017. Now apparently, my best players for these forward or shadow striker positions are my technically my attacking midfielders, but tough, I'm going to play this lot, just because you know, apparently Booster's not very good as a roaming playmaker, is he any better as a... he's better as a deep-lying playmaker so they can swap around. My defence is still horrible, although, and I'll try and remember which one, let's, let's replace Mr. McDamara and put an extra defender on the bench. I have promoted Mr. John Rose for my under-23 side. He's one of the other young kids that I signed on the hope that maybe he'll develop, but at least he gives me a choice if I decide Herbie Kane is not really cutting it as a defender, and he's playing, Herbie's playing as a ball-playing defender because he's the one with the best actual skills for that in the back three. As you can see, my team is not really designed for these roles, but we did a surprisingly good job playing this formation in the second half of the last game. So, I'm starting with this formation this time round, and see what happens. And yes, Mr. Rose needs a number. You can have that number. Again, I'm not expecting miracles, but I was pleasantly surprised by how effective this formation turned out to be in the second half of the last game. So I figured, what the heck. I only, I literally only put it on there because it's always nice to have a third formation for your side to learn. Where it's, but it's close enough to my usual 4-3-3 that I can actually live with it. I just don't like playing with one striker and two, two wingers, which seems to be the norm in this game for most people these days. And apparently they want me to tell them to pick up where they left off. So, okay, we will assertively tell my team that. in a much less impressive stadium than is normal and they're playing with a player who's slightly injured to start with at least I assume they are, I assume I'm, I'm the one in white and I think that is correct, I am the one in white with red socks that's a kit I haven't seen me play in before nor do I have any idea how well we're going to play I actually quite like this kit to be honest I have no idea how well we're going to play in this formation from the start of a game, but I'm willing to be surprised and impressed. In fact, I'd like to be surprised and impressed. It would make a nice change with this side. Good three ball. Oh, we got the ball through to Savage, who couldn't quite actually take a shot. Not something I expect to see, a Savage in the penalty area. Which does remind me with his name. I've actually been watching videos of Britain's Got Talent, because I'm not in Britain so I can't watch the programme live, but I'm lucky. And there was this kid, Ned somebody or other, who from his audition a few months ago insulted all the judges in the semi-final and the final. He wasn't quite as surprising and therefore quite as funny in a lot of it, but some of his insulting jokes were quite good, but his catchphrase seemed to be, ooh, savage. Or just variations on the word savage some, somehow. And, you know, that was a vicious foul. And hence the fact I've got a player named Savage just reminded me of the fact I'd been watching those. As well as, I did find, what was his name, De Deloso, somebody or other, another comedian on BGT. Very, very funny. Okay, I know it was a vicious foul, but I didn't expect him to get a red card instantly. I'm happy! It's always nice to play against 10 men, but that surprised me. 
one thing they've managed to do so far is commit one foul and that cost them a man. Great, now I'm going to be getting yellow cards, aren't I? Because my guy... Oh no, I just got a lecture. I normally assume with this game, if my guys foul anybody, I'm getting a yellow card, and if their guys foul me, then nothing's going to happen. That was a good sliding tackle by whoever their injured player. So their slightly injured player happens to be. But not as good as the tackle from Savage. Now oh, Telford, that's his name. Their passing is obviously about as good as mine. Oh, a nice ball over the top for his nose to, to chase and take a shot with. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to end up. That's a good cross if there'd been somebody over that ed end of the penalty area to actually receive it. And I must admit, playing with what is effectively a back five, if you count the two wing backs, seems a much better idea for my team. Because the centre three are not that good, but there being three of them gives me a little more hope that one of them might actually get in the right position to intercept a ball. I would say a little more hope, not necessarily a great deal more hope. It's always good to have a little more hope. Oh, did he manage to get back on side? Apparently he did. Nice shot. Follow up. Yes. Nice goal by Thomas. Always nice to see your players actually follow up for a rebound. Yeah, a nicely taken goal in the end. Well, apparently the fact they're down to ten men has really hurt them. If I tend to seem to be apparently dominating. And I'm still liking this kit. Not something I normally notice with my side, but I happen to... Oh, that's a bad deflection. Oh, that was unlucky. Almost got an open goal out of it. That's right. Run, Thomas. Keep the ball in. Yeah, I'm not so sure we're good at balls over the top, but... We're doing... Relatively well. There again, it's still only a 1-0 lead, and it can disappear in an instant. Not that I'm uh, sort of sweating or getting truly worried at this point, but my paranoia level is spiking. If I'd had it that second goal, I, my paranoia level would be probably more under control, because... I can actually deal with a 2-0 lead and against 10 men not worrying when they actually had an attack. But at 1-0, I naturally worry. Well, that's a good ball. Madge won't do anything with it, but because Madge never does anything with any decent balls that he gets past. Oh dear, Brewster's no problem. Oh no, McGlade. I thought Brewster was going to get some that booking. Even, th even then, McGlade got away with it. OK, he decided to book Thomas. He had to book somebody in the end. We are playing well, I must admit. But there's still room for improvement. And we'll see if Madge actually manages to do anything in the second half, but it's entirely possible that there will be a couple of substitutes coming in very shortly. I say very shortly, normally about the 60th minute is when I aim for substitutes. But I've looked much more dangerous with this formation than I have with my previous one. Which is a nice sign. Even with less than great crosses like that by Savage. Big hoof upfield. And yes, my first defender lost. 
But there was somebody to, to back him up for once. Yes, I still definitely need more central defenders and better central defenders. But I will happily live with the situation I've currently got if this defensive central defending defending I'll try that word again. Central defensive trio actually manages to do something. Unlucky Savage. Again, not really expecting you to be in the penalty area, so Right now Savage is probably gonna get booked. Yep. Well that makes my choice of substitutes a lot easier. Take off the two people with bookings. I don't make that, and I've got three people with bookings. Okay, that's going to make my substitution choices a little more difficult. Yikes. Now I get worried and Booster has to go in for a tackle because I'm assuming he's going to foul somebody and I'm going to have trouble and. Ooh, Kane, that looked a bit dodgy. Good three ball. Take your time, set yourself up. Good shot. Oh, I can't blame their goalkeeper for that, unlike the commentary, which appears to be blaming him. That was actually Madge with a three ball. He was one of those I was thinking of taking off. Oh, well, that happily worked. Well, they put in a couple of substitutes. And to be honest, it's about time I did the same. And I'll wait for the results of this attempted attack. Nice dive there by Savage. And nice of McGlade to win the ball back. Another decent three ball. Wasn't this yes, you didn't give him an option, people. Madge can only do so much by himself. And normally he can only do that pretty badly. I managed to win myself a corner. At which point we will take off my two fullbacks. And much as I shouldn't really do this, I'm gonna take him off as well because I just don't want a red card. That's a pretty pitiful corner. That's a good ball back in. Admittedly, somebody was offside. My new, newly um, on the field right back. Or right, right wing back. Okay, I thought I was going to get another yellow card then. Eek! That could have gone anywhere. But is this the start of the Great Wigan Revival? No. Not if that is intended to be a three ball for slaughter, it's not. But we're defending in numbers. And they're still getting in a three ball and a decent shot. And a good save. A nice header out. Pity we didn't actually run towards... Oh, that was vicious, Madge. If you don't get sent off for that... Really? You just stamped on the back of someone's leg and you got away with a yellow card. I would have had no complaints if Madge had been sent off with that one. That looked vicious and bad. Again, nobody's looking for space, are they? So we're going to get tackled. Look for a man in space. For God's sake. 
Good ball over the top to the man who should no longer be on the field and he still can't score apparently. Oh, he's finally scored. Good old neighbours match has finally scored. Again, Rochdale have a perfectly valid argument that he should not have been on the field, but... I'm happy. It's a third goal. I feel confident that we can see out this game with a victory. And that's a better corner. And that's a great goal. Is that Whitaker? His first goal of the season too. And he's just signed a new contract. Always nice. And it's nice they were actually putting a decent corner that somebody got their head onto. In off the bar, but I'll take it. Each and every time. Yeah, I wouldn't put this side up against anybody that's a division above me, for example. But I've got a bit more confidence in the way they're playing currently than I did have two weeks ago. And it may be down to this wonderful weird formation which my players are not really suited role wise to play but they seem to be adapting to it su sufficiently well and I'm very happy at a very emphatic victory and apparently so are they because they now all appear to have superb morale yeehaw I'm still in third, and as long as the teams behind me start messing up, I will be happy. Yes, oh yeah, of course, it, there was against ten men. I I must admit that's probably uh, something I should have, have really taken note of before being overly emphatic in my praise. Well, okay, okay, next is a game against Walsall. Followed by the MK Dons, then Notts County in the FA Cup first round. And they're in the division below League 2, whatever that one's called. I forget. I'll find out. Vanarama National League. And they're middling in that, so... Even though it is an away game, I should have confidence in that one, as I should have confidence in the home game in the Checker Trade Trophy, which I've been knocked out of anyway against Chester, but it would be nice to score a victory there too. But that's a couple more games away before I get to those. First I've got to go through Walsall and the MK Dons, which should be challenging enough. Anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed. It was nice to get another victory. After that run of... One, one win in nine games. Yes, I'm actually feeling quite happy right now. Anyway, that's it. As I said, that's it. And hopefully I will see you down the road.